And let's play guessing games, tiger, platypus, and man. What do they all have in common? Good afternoon everyone. Don't know the answer? Then you are lucky you fell for this video. Apparently, they have nothing in common, but the truth is that they are all part of the same group. That group is the therapsids. If you have no interest in paleontology, you may never have heard of them, but the vast majority of this group disappeared from the planet in the Permian, 250 million years ago. But they were not completely extinct. A handful of them managed to survive, and more than this, over time they became a very successful group. This group is a species that exists to this day, and that we humans are also part of. Mammals. For this reason we can say that the therapsids, our ancestors, are also called reptilian mammals or mammaliforms. They look pretty strong, don't they? This curious creature had many reptile-like features. We can also notice in them many characteristics of mammals. Do not confuse them with dinosaurs. There is nothing in common between therapsids and dinosaurs. But after all, what was this curious creature? What did they look like? Where did they go? Let's find out together. But first, please like, subscribe to our channel and follow our videos every day we will have a new video. The appearance and nature of therapsids, a really large group, is very varied. It is really hard to notice how they are related, but they still have points in common, mainly their teeth. There may not be many people who have looked inside the mouth of a crocodile, but if you look at a picture of one smiling with its mouth wide open, you will notice that the size and shape of its fangs are all the same. In this respect, the other reptiles are also the same. But on the other hand, the teeth of the therapsids are different, with the canines, incisors, and molars each having a different function. Also, therapsids have learned to walk in a different way. Their limbs are connected at the bottom of the body, unlike creatures like crocodiles, which are connected at the sides. Another important feature of therapsids is the hair that covers their bodies. We don't know when they realized the promising future of body hair and started to develop it. What we can say is that from the beginning their fur was soft, smooth, and without the presence of scales. For that matter, almost all therapsids have whiskers, just like cats. Would you like to have a creature like this as a pet? That would be amazing. And one more interesting feature, they started to feed their young with mother's milk, even though they couldn't breed them in their bellies. In return, they laid eggs covered with a kind of leather, like the platypus, which still does this to this day, perhaps as do kangaroos. The therapsids had a special pouch and carried their eggs in it, but this is still only speculation. They had hair all over their bodies, sharp teeth, and wounds to feed on. Incredible! Pups with mother's milk. Wow, how interesting! I wonder what exactly is missing? Body temperature. Reptiles do not have any thermoregulation system, and their temperature is altered by the environment around them. How crazy! Realizing that this was not good, the therapsids made a decision and became warm-blooded animals. This was a great decision. Their metabolism improved and never again did their feet get cold at night. Incredible! These characteristics signaled the connection between therapsids and mammals. From now on, we will show the nature of therapsids that made them such unique creatures. The rich diversity of therapsids. Paleontologists tend to get excited when it comes to classification and often there are heated debates about how to classify animals. Besides common classifications like order and family, there is also something called the clado. This includes the entire branch of descendants originating from a common ancestor. According to this, therapsids are divided into three main clades, the dinocephaly, anomodonts, and periodonts. Already revealing the end of the story, only the periodontus will have a happy ending. But let's follow the order of the facts, starting with the dinocephalians. This giant animal came to measure 6m in length and was, so to speak, quite chunky. And most of all, it reminds us very much of a quiet hippopotamus today. 
It also liked to go into the swamp and chew on rotten tree trunks or plants like horsetail. And the meaning of dinocephalus is terrible head. Do you know why it is called this? Because of its extremely thick skull and the horns and pointed structures that decorate it. For example, the Steminosuchus which had something similar to a crown it also. It had a protuberance on its cheeks above its eyes, but its function to this day has not been completely unraveled. Some theories claim that it served for regulation term, while another theory explains that by using them, they pushed each other to decide who was the strongest in the group. Also part of this group were some primitive predators that lived inside bushes on the edges of lakes and would attack their prey by surprise. Broadly speaking, all the conditions for today's us and the flaw to thrive were complete. For this reason, by the beginning of the Permian, it had already expanded its and throughout the giant continent of the time called Pangaea. By the end of the Middle Permian, however, it had practically become extinct. Next on the stage of history were the Anomodontos. The Anomodontos, which were one of the species of therapsids, appeared in the Middle Permian. And they survived for a long time, living even into the age of the dinosaurs. Among them, there were from small to extremely large creatures. For example, one species called Saminians, which was about 30 centimeters long and had an appearance that somehow resembled a monkey, from the shape of its arms and legs. It is believed that, like primates, they could climb trees with great agility. On the other hand, Lystrosaurus, which lived in semi-arid environments, was up to 2 meters tall and, with its long canine teeth, dug into the roots of plants, thus ensuring its food. Another very curious anomodont was the Placerias. It had no canine teeth, but on the other hand, it had huge fangs. The Placerias weighed a ton and, in adulthood, measured up to three and a half meters long. It had extremely strong legs and a rounded body, and it always preferred to walk in groups. It even looks like a mammoth it is not, but unfortunately, like the mammoths, it would follow a tragic fate using anomodonts. They were not able to adapt to an environment around them, and in the end, they became extinct. Let's go to the Theriodonts. Three groups were part of this category, the Gorgonopsids, Therocephalids, and Cynodonts. Be sure to see these last animals, they will give you a big surprise, especially the Gorgonopsids, not to be confused with a Demogorgon monster from Stranger Things. Although they had a lot in common, for example, they are both very dangerous. The most famous one, the Gorgonopsid, is probably Inostrancevia. This terrible predator had a giant body and its mouth has long, sharp fangs. After millions of years, saber-toothed tigers would have fangs just like these. An even more varied group were the Therocephalians. Some of them were small predators that fed on insects, while others were quite large, and there were even some herbivores. Moreover, some of these species have a poison gland inside their mouth, and a single bite meant the end. But even the Therocephala could not win the fight for survival against other therapsids. Their rivals in this battle were the Cynodon. Let's finally meet our ancestors. The Cynodonts were the only survivors among all the therapsids. And in time, they evolved and became the mammals. It is still not known which species among them became our ancestors, but it is certain that it was one of them. So what did the tough guy look like who managed to survive? Was it strong and scary? Well, not so much. Regardless of its size, the Cynodon preferred to hide in its burrows when it sensed danger, and obviously hunted. Only during the night, this rather cowardly strategy worked very well to escape from a new predator that was gaining strength. We are talking about those who became the real kings of the world, the dinosaurs. This nocturnal behavior was also adopted by the first mammals, which were descendants of the Cynodonts and were already more evolved. But the golden age of the Therapsids would also come to an end. The prosperity in this group, without being husky, the extinction of the Permian. This was the biggest and most sudden extinction in history, and the cause of it is still unclear. The key to this mystery may lie in the Siberian rags, formed by a giant lava block spilled over an area of about 2 million square kilometers, or perhaps a giant meteorite fell on planet Earth, just like in the age of the dinosaurs. Hello everybody, 
This brings us to the end of the video, thank you very much for watching this far. As you have seen, all is well that ends well, and as a result, we were born. So we have to be grateful to our Terapsid ancestors, since even in the most difficult times they were able to protect the species. So, let's say goodbye for a short while, descendants of the great Terapsids. If you like it, we have two more videos to show you. Leave your like and help the channel to bring you one new video a day.